What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Vile Files. This is a good episode. It's With, great. It's re- I loved Lauren. Rochelle is very excited. Um, <laughs> yes, our, our guest is Lauren Zima, uh, the uh, Bachelor, Bachelorette correspondent for Entertainment Tonight. Also, Chris Harrison's girlfriend. Wait, you know what? Chris Harris. Yeah, wait. How do we say it where it's just like Chris is his, Chris is her boyfriend. Yeah. Chris Harrison's girlfriend. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Harrison has the pleasure of dating <laughs> Lauren Zima. Uh, Rochelle is back from her mysterious vacation. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Shug is not with us today. Um, I know, we're bummed. I mean, real talk. I know this is maybe even a hot topic. Shug's dog, Oliver, was attacked by another dog. Yeah. And he's okay. Hospital. He is going to survive. It was a very scary situation. This is a heated debate, and we've kind of recorded a little bit before. Uh, I I I mentioned the dog breed on my Instagram that has now been expired. I've been told by some people I don't necessarily agree with it that it's not good to name the breed of the dog because of stereotypes or or whatever. I don't know necessarily agree. My frustration isn't with the dog; it's with the owner. Yeah, the owner messed uh, up. This particular dog we come to find has put uh, two other dogs in the hospital. It's a rescue dog, and I think it's amazing to rescue a dog. I think the reality is that sometimes if you are going to rescue a dog, you should you should be re- respectful of that dog and other people around that because that dog might come from a past that has made them susceptible to violence. Yeah. Uh, just like people, dogs can be weaponized. And just like people, some dogs are more can be potentially more dangerous than others. That's just a, a fact. I mean, I this particular breed of dog, I love. I think they're awesome dogs and they can be very gentle and kind. Unfortunately, it's a type of dog that if you abuse it and, and treat it with violence mm-hmm. and it acts out violently, mm-hmm. can be very scary and can cause serious damage to those around it, which is unfortunate. But my frustration is with this owner. The this owner. owner was skateboarding with this dog. And I don't know anything about like, I'm assuming that only riles up a dog when they're skateboarding and going. And then this owner, when, when, when the dog attacked Oliver yelled out, pick up your dog, pick up your dog. Like he knew and she did, she picked the dog and the dog clamped on to the uh, Oliver's leg and shook it. And thankfully that's all that happened. So traumatizing for Suge too. It was scary. And thank God that Suge's arm didn't get in the way or like a two year old child was there, you know, um, it's really scary. But this, this owner knew this dog was capable of it and yet this owner chose not to muzzle his dog which i get he's like oh well when i skateboard with him uh he can't breathe right well then don't skateboard with your dog dude if 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 your dog because now this dog's at risk what is Shug supposed to do in this situation when you find out your dog's attacked and then it's attacked two other dogs and this guy clearly has shown that he's not a responsible dog owner right you're like forced then it's become they have to put on the dog well you're not going to put down the owner yeah. You know, like, right. and it's scary and this dog doesn't deserve to be put at risk, but clearly yeah. this, this, and I think that's just unfortunate. So if you are a dog owner and if you have rescued a dog, that's awesome. But regardless of whatever dog that you have, if your dog has a history of biting people or, or biting other dogs, then put your dog in a situation or don't put them in a situation that allows them to put other people at risk. And it's yeah. really unfortunate. And we're sending our love to Shug um, and Oliver. Anyways, that's all I got to say about that. Rochelle, where, where the hell were you? Uh, okay, so I nanny part-time and they, I went with them to Hawaii. So Whoa. I guess I was kind of embarrassed to say like, Why oh, I'm nannying. Why? I don't know. I'm, I are don't you, know. Are you nanny shaming? <laughs> I guess I am. I apologize. Are you not? I'm just, it's not what I want to be doing at my age, but you know, it's, it's fun. What do you mean at your age? I don't know. It's just not, it's fine. <laughs> Did you get paid to go to Hawaii? I got paid to go to Hawaii. And let me tell you, okay, I was inspired by the Becca Jess episode of like owning, you know, being alone, mysterious French woman. And I went on Tinder in Hawaii. Yeah. And let me tell you, if your self-esteem is low, go on to a remote island and get on tinder because you will match with everybody well i won't say that but i did get i went on a date a secluded beach okay watch the sunset he had a picnic stars above beach no not a soul in sight can you imagine you won't say you got i don't i don't like the I don't like the, I don't want any. So Rochelle may or may not have been late. Yes. <laughs> uh, late. Well, where you were in Hawaii. I so was in Hawaii. We, oh, so I definitely was late. Oh. So you definitely got late. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But did, is, uh, Isn't that, I'm like, guys in LA don't put in any effort. This guy, beach, picnic. 
are you sunset? Still, are you still in contact with this romantic man? I mean, there's no point, really. Hit it and quit it. Well, I mean, what's wow. what's he lives in Hawaii? He's four hours away. So you don't believe in long distance relationships? Long distance. He's a four hour flight. Nick, really? He's. Does he want to keep talking? He has no intention of moving to L.A. ever. Does he want to keep talking? I don't. I don't get that impression. Hmm. Savage. What? Savage. <laughs> what? No, I'm not. I, no, I'm giving you a hard time. I think it's great. <laughs> so you had a great. Um, you made some money. Yeah. You went on vacation. Yeah. You met a man. You had a picnic underneath the stars. You <laughs> yeah. may or may not have had sex. <laughs> yeah. If her mom's listening, she didn't have sex. <laughs> Yeah. But wink, wink. <laughs> Good for you, Rochelle. Welcome back. I'm Thank glad you. we could uh, catch up on your life. And uh, thanks for uh, holding down the fort. Um, well, not holding up. We missed you. I mean, technically, I mean, we <laughs> we were just a goddamn mess while you were gone. <laughs> um, but you are back. Um, and we do, as, as as Rochelle mentioned, have a great rep- episode. <laughs> episode with our dear friend, Lauren Zima, uh, we get to little, know a little bit about Lauren. And she said she's never talked about her relationship she never with Chris talked about, before. We've had to find out how they met. Yeah. Who hit up who? Uh, obviously, her some thoughts on the Jed situation. Yeah. Uh, she had the uh, pleasure, well, pleasure, I don't know. She interviewed Jed's accuser. Oh. Sounds so. That does sound. Well, <laughs> Jed's accuser. I like saying it because it sounds like, makes it sounds bad. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. So we love the drama. We do. Anyways, thanks for listening. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. And uh, yeah, Lauren Zima, everybody. Time for Nick to sell you things you really need, but you don't own yet. Better help. Better help, Rochelle. Well, we, we help people, yeah, but we also are not professionals. And a lot of times you say, you should talk to a professional. We do. In fact... Uh, <laughs> Probably everybody. <laughs> well, sometimes, I mean, I, 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 we, we people, our fans are trusting us with some ver- personal questions. Right. I'm thankful for that. But sometimes right. there's a disclosure of, of getting professional help. Uh, and the people at BetterHelp help you do that um, conveniently. Yeah, it's amazing. It's worldwide. You can access it within 24 hours on your phone, on your computer. Yeah, licensed professional counselors. Yeah. Anger issues if you have them or your family member does. A grief, self-esteem issues. If Maybe if you're not sleeping and your yeah. natural habits isn't doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, no, trauma, uh, relationship problems, uh, depression. Yeah. Uh, they deal with all these topics. It's all confidential. So if you're a person who's like, I really think I do need help, but I don't have health care or I can't afford it or I don't know a therapist, this is no excuses. You can get help today. They if have you access need it. to over 3,000 uh, US licensed therapists across the f- all 50 states. Mm-hmm. It's worldwide. Yeah. That's great. I think everyone should do it honestly. You listen to Vile Files. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll get you thinking about all the problems you have of these relatable topics. Exactly. And then we'll really dig up some emotional mm-hmm. baggage that you need to process. And then you just reach out to better help. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's it's actually really great. But best of all, it's truly affordable. Yeah, exactly. Vile file, vile file listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code Vile. So why not get started today? Go to betterhealth.com slash Vial, V-I-A-L-L. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess, 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 assess. Oh, he loves that word. Your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Vial, V-I-A-L-L. Better help. Better help, people. Rochelle, how are you loving your natural habits? Well, I'm loving my diffuser, if I'll be honest. Mm. Because my roommate always is lighting candles, and now I can't be around candles because you freak me out about them. But They're he, not healthy for you. But he loves the diffuser. He's a guy, but he loves the style of it. Um, you know? It's good, like, it's gender neutral. comes in white and black. It's very elegant. Yeah. Um, listen, I mean, listen, you have a st- candles for aesthetics, and if you... But, yeah. like, listen, you shouldn't be breathing it in, but more importantly... Uh, did you know that when you're diffusing essential oils into the room, it actually oxid like oh, I can't pronounce the word. It creates more oxygen in the air. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's very healthy for yeah. you. Yeah. 
Anyways, uh, if you are looking for a cleaner solution to uh, scent your indoor air, mm-hmm. if, even if that's all you do, yeah. it's a much healthier, safer option that yeah. also can help relieve stress. Uh, has a relaxing feeling. It can help reduce headaches. Yeah, it can boost your immune system. Yeah, I'm, glad I'm addicted to it. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're liking it. Again, right now, and we're going to change this. But right now, all new customers get twenty percent off. Wow! At checkout, you don't even have to put a code in on the diffuser too. On everything. On wow! Our on our website, um, free shipping domestically. Head to nhoils.com. Get yourself a diffuser or in a roll-on. Yeah. The roll-ons are ready to go. You can take them anywhere. If you are on the go, it's great for kind of resetting during the day. If you do a, like a yoga and meditation class, uh, it is an alternative to use as a perfume or a cologne if you want. It will absorb into your skin and it won't last because we don't put chemicals or fragrances in that, but you can keep applying it. You know, it's, yeah, it's, you're going to get addicted. I'm addicted to the roll-ons. Um, so yeah, try nhoils.com, natural habits. Follow us on an Instagram. A lot of great health information on our Instagram about essential oils, uh, how to use them, um, all the benefits they have with them. So give us a follow at natural habits and uh, nhoils.com. Now go buy the stuff. Lauren Zima, Ooh, how yeah. are you? Welcome to... The vile files. Thank you for having me, and thank you for this mug with your face on it. <laughs> yeah, I love it so much. Uh, mm. Thanks for drinking out of my face. <laughs> no one weird. has ever said that to me before. <laughs> uh, just came to me. Uh, Lauren Zima uh, is our wonderful guest today. Uh, Lauren, I feel this feels. Um, Does it feel weird? It feels it a little feels weird. weird. Yeah, it's like the the Lauren's usually the one asking the hard hitting questions to me. And I'm usually trying to deflect, being like, I don't know. I don't know. Let me ask, answer your question in a way that I feel comfortable asking because I don't want to answer your question. Why not? Well, you know, when I was, you know, Lauren, for those of you who don't know, is the, works for, for ET Entertainment Tonight yes. and is kind of the, she's the bachelor go to woman. Um, Thank you. For Entertainment Tonight. And she's made a name for herself in, in journalism and pop culture in general and has a, a very hit popular recap show called Roses and Rosé. Yes. Is that, what, is that it? Did you I get nailed it, right? it. You did not say Roses and Rose. <laughs> she people. also <laughs> once asked me to make her a video for her and I was just like doing a bunch of shit and talking to her friend and I recorded it and I sent it to her and I, I called her Laura in the video. I was and I meet after I sent it I was like what the fuck? Oh, no. <laughs> Dark. Felt, felt real dumb. Dark times. Dark moment. I mean, we've known each other for quite some time now. And yeah, it's weird because we were just talking about this. But we can't remember when we met. But I first, I think I first interviewed you at your photo shoot to be The Bachelor because we always, ET always does the photo shoots for the lead. And I was so excited for you to be Bachelor. I got up and cheered when they announced you. Really? Yes. Thanks. <laughs> makes me feel good I did you were so good on Paradise I remember we were in the office and we were all like yes like this is such a surprise it's so fun it's so great and we were so stoked and then I was also uh, I was on your date with Rachel remember, I remember in New that. Orleans yeah. I interviewed you there yeah wait day. you watched the date well we always go and we do kind of a set visit with a date oh. so yeah, like yeah, you do that like kind of every season we do it every season for Hannah's season we did the rugby date oh that's um, that's literally Oh, there's our picture. That's our photo shoot. Yeah. Oh, we're babies. Mm. That was like so much has changed. Two, two years ago. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of which, Lauren. Mm, tea. Also is, a uh, you know, got closer to the franchise. <laughs> yeah. In what way? She is uh, now the... Uh, <laughs> Look at her face. The lady friend, girlfriend of one Chris Harrison. That's what we say. We say lady friend. Lady, lady friend? A lady friend. I just want to know who slid into whose DM. Oh, I DM'd him. You did. See? <gasps> yeah. She did DM. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Women are doing it nowadays. Good, good for you. And yeah. how... That's a bold move on your part. Well, I will say I DM'd after a bit of a vibe. We <laughs> were, you know... Nevertheless, and, still bold. Oh, but what was the vibe you were getting? Well, I want I fully support women sliding into the DMs. I'm not even saying that yeah. that, that wasn't bold, yeah. but you, this is the host of a hit show of which you cover. Right. And I'm sure Chris's job 
is to be charming and and delightful and and friendly totally. and potentially could have been mistaken as flirty but yet you were like no no this dude's into me yeah i'm gonna shoot my shot i did and i felt it yeah well you know i've been interviewing what did he him do specifically I've been interviewing him for, I don't know, three years. And it was always incredibly professional. Like, mm, yes. And not, okay. uh, truly, no, really. I mean, not in a negative way, but I never, <laughs> I never was like, I just never even looked at him that way because here is the difference. When you're interviewing. Wait, wait, what do you mean you didn't look at him that way? I mean, I didn't like, find, I never looked at him and even considered Choose whether I found him attractive. your words carefully about Daddy your boy. I really Harrison? didn't. Come on. I truly didn't, I promise. Anyways, I'm teasing. Uh, but, you know, when you interview people who are the contestants, a lot of people are having like their first taste of being interviewed. So they mm. want to like chat a little bit before or after. It's a little yeah. like, you know, more chatty. But Chris has been doing this for such a long time and he would have to, you know, probably go and do something else. So he comes and he always does press in a very professional, yes. timely. I come do my interview. I give great sound bites. I leave kind of away. So it was just always so professional and so cordial. And he was always lovely. And that was it. And then I ran into him. Mm. I was getting some coffee. He was getting some tea. He Isn't doesn't it? drink coffee. And he said something about like. You just ran into he, him like. At a, yeah. And off, off the. <laughs> She not a, was not, stalking not him. in a work setting. Well, <laughs> I ran into him. <laughs> ran into him. Uh, she was like, "I was waiting on the ninth hole at the golf course." She constantly. <laughs> I'll be honest. It was at a. It was at a tell-all taping. Oh, <laughs> we're both at craft services. Oh, craft service love. We ran into him. I ran it. I. I went to go get. Caught. We don't even. We're not even okay. in the same. War He's on the stage. We're back. The craft yeah. services. One craft of the services breaks? running during a break, and. He just gave me a different vibe. I think we. S Which was what was the vibe? This is listen. This is great. <laughs> I really appreciate you sharing this because this show we talk a lot about dating and yeah. it can be very confusing to like know when to shoot your shot. I'd love to know what specifically could you give our listeners more details. Sure. To know when they should shoot theirs because sometimes it's very confusing. Like he does X, Y, and Z. I don't know if he's into me. Well, you know what I what I actually have told a lot of my friends is I just don't see the harm. In sending someone a a right a placid oh, message, right. placid. Tot totally great. Also, I'm gonna first I'm gonna <laughs> ask you what that word means. Yeah. But before, calm, <laughs> chill. Before, but what Easy was going. the vibe like? There's got there has to have been something. There was something significant. Did he offer you cream? <laughs> like, <laughs> stop. I don't. I didn't mean that in a wow that <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> Wow. She's mm. gagging into her vile pile of <laughs> no, She was getting coffee. And he was like, hey, yes. Lauren, can I get you a. a no, it was actually, it was fairly overt. I think he said uh -oh. something about, uh, he mentioned something about like picking his kids up or something. He somehow brought up like Very being sexy. single, I think. And then I said, okay, that's, there we go. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm. If only I had someone to pick I, up my kids with. No. <laughs> I said something like, I'm single now. And he was like, oh, but I said it in a more eloquent way. Than that. I don't know. Somehow it, two people somehow it like, was communicated. We're this is sounding he wasn't like, give me that ass. He didn't say that. Okay, no, good. no, 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 no. But Chris it was is a professional. I yeah. mean, I'm making it sound much more straightforward than it was. I think it was more conversational than that, but somehow it was communicated. It was electric chemistry. And I just DM'd him and said, hey, it was really good to see you. I, I get I get what yeah. she, I get what Lauren's trying to say. Like, and these, <laughs> no, right? But like, it sounds like you can, there's the difference between mm -hmm. someone who's like being pleasant and nice. How was your day? Totally. Can I open the door for you? That's not necessarily flirting. But when someone starts like saying, yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. When you're just gonna, I'm super single, <laughs> you know, and like, yeah, like I, I'm sure I've done stuff like that where you're just kind of like, I don't know if you're interested, but I just want you to know, right? Which I appreciate. What's going on with me? And then that makes sense because you know what is annoying is when you are just being a pleasant person and people do think you're hitting on them, right? Which I has, I mean, that ha it's like, no, I'm just all the time <laughs> for you, oh, Nick, or Nick on the daily. No, <laughs> I know it. I've been told I'm a flirt. Uh, what? I don't, I do, what? I don't think. Why I'm a, would anyone ever say? That? I think I'm just. I think <laughs> I just am a pleasant person. Well, I've also been told I'm not pleasant, but <laughs> but when I'm trying to be pleasant, apparently I'm a flirt. I endorse you one way or the other. Pleasant, Nick. Uh, not pleasant. Um, anyway, so Chris, Chris was. Uh, so that was communicated, and he had also, I think, mentioned. Uh, 
something about it had just been his birthday. Maybe his birthday was coming up. I don't remember. But so I just DM'd and him and like, said. he was like, I was super alone on my birthday. I was so darkly alone. <laughs> 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 now that I think about it, that might have been, I don't remember. I was so captivated by him in the moment Ooh, that I don't remember. Captivated. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I messaged him and said it was so, you know, it was really good to see you the other day. Like, I hope all is well. And I think I said, have a good birthday or hope you birth your birthday was good. Something like that. Oh, so it was a very benign. Very benign. Placid. placid. What does placid mean? Well, well, we should Google it and get the I'll, exact definition oh, in you case I'm using it wrong. But you, I believe it to mean did you get easy, calm. Do you have calm. a word of the day calendar? And now you're trying to throw it in. No, it's calm. Yeah, like a, there like we a go. lake. Not easily. Like Lake Placid. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was even the tempered, best calm, calm uh, and peaceful. Yeah. Even okay, benign. Benign. It was kind of like not a huge swing, a little you uh, yeah. know bunt. It was a wave. It was a wave, and that is what I tell my friends because I do have some girlfriends who are very much caught up in I think the movie fantasy of how relationships start, and they think that they're going to meet like an incredibly handsome doctor at like a book club who's going to come up to them and just ask them out. And I'm like, this is not how we it all works. All want to meet that way, but like, yeah. <laughs> I so I say, what is wrong with like saying like just send a little DM? It doesn't have to be hi. I want to go out with you, but. Get the conversation going. So let me ask you this. When you DM'd, it sounds like, was this going on in your head? Because this is smart. Because, all right, were you was was Lauren Zima being like, all right, I think this guy was flirting with me. I want to shoot my shot. But I want to do it in a kind of fail-safe way where if I just say hi and like kind of open the door lin window, if he doesn't reply back, I'm still in the clear. 100%. Because I wasn't like, hey, man, uh, I want to lick your face. Should we get some coffee? <laughs> 100%. That's weird to come back from. Yes. You know, like. I didn't say, hey, I couldn't be more single and I know how darkly alone you are. <laughs> so, so, okay. So you sent this fairly benign. Placid. Placid. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 man. Good hey. to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hope and the B day's great. When did it escalate? Did Chris escalate it? We did a little bit of DMing back and forth. It got a little more flirtatious. Who really shot the shot? He finally said, he's a gentleman in every sense of the word. He finally said, like, we should grab a drink. Great. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. So, Chris, you, you, you like paved the runway. I opened the door and he walked through. He did. Oh, yeah. that's the perfect great. way to Open go. Open the door. That's great. Make it, we all, let's make it easy on each other. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. What would you have done had Chris not done that? Would you, were you like, were you ready to like? I would not have asked him out. No. No. Why not? Because I, I think, like I said, I got a little bit of a different vibe, but it still, you know, we've known each other professionally for years. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Maybe it was just, I mean, we both jokingly call it. Like the other day, I somebody asked us how we met and I waited to hear him tell the story for the first time. And it made me really happy. He told it exactly the same way. And he used the same phrase that I've used when telling my friends, which is we had our first human conversation. So after that conversation, I wasn't sure if I'd totally read it right. So I wouldn't have asked him but out if reason, he hadn't reciprocated. Well, I, 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 I'm curious because while you don't like, you guys don't work for the same company, right? you know, like, and I do get a lot of questions and like, especially with my questions with Nick about like work situations. So you guys don't work for the same company, but you work together. You are colleagues in a sense. In a sense. Right? Um, it would certainly make your job harder had you felt embarrassed or it, let's say you, let's say if right. Chris was, a, let's say in a non-dating setting, let's say you ran into Chris at a bar, got super drunk, were totally inappropriate. I'm not saying you would. <laughs> that would make your say. job harder, right? As the host of the show that you cover. Of course. So like you're kind of in a way colleagues. So Chris, same thing for Chris. He had to make this decision. This is someone that I interact with through work yes. who uh, works for a company that covers our show. Mm -hmm. It was a, it's a, it's hard as, as a guy, especially in like, you know, today's, you know, me too, great thing. But like we, as guys, we want to make sure that we're being appropriate, especially in work situations. What's it, you know, Chris I, is in a position of power as the host of the show. I give him credit for like trying. He want he and then. Well, look, this is why I act, and it's actually you know another saying, reason. Like, yes, it's tough. It's but tough it's to another do. reason that I encourage my girlfriends to open the door. It, yeah. it, because you know what it does? It puts you also in a position of power and comfort as mm -hmm. a woman, yeah. so you can feel at that arena. Um, 
And I, I also understand that for men, we, we put the onus on them a lot of them making that first move. That's nerve wracking. That can be confusing for them. They don't, you know, the good ones don't want to offend anyone. So uh, it all worked out really well. And it was also the perfect amount of time of we had like a little bit of messaging. And then, like he said, let's grab a drink and have real person talk because that's another thing I think my friends do. They stay in the mm-hmm. dating app messaging world too long. I'm like, you're misreading yeah. tone. It's getting weird. Get a real conversation. But why, why wouldn't you have, have asked him out? Yeah. I what think if Chris was like, again, I, what he didn't and good for Chris, but what if Chris was just like, man, I, what if he was literally thinking the same thing you were thinking? Mm-hmm. And he was just like, what, what if, if he hadn't given me flirty vibes, I would have just left it. I think but that he is, responded. Okay, here's why I wouldn't have asked him out. Because I opened the door. Because I already you, felt I'd, yeah. I'd gone my way you, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And now I need you to come you to wanted, me a little bit. You wanted some reciprocity. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like, wasn't it on Becca Kufrin's season when com- some guy got out of the limo and he was like, I need you to come. Oh, that was the 60% worst. 60% oh, or for- God. whatever. Let's all, let's that was each wild. take a step uh, forward. Yeah. So I'd taken my step and I needed him to take a step. And he did. And now you guys are in love. Isn't it yeah. hard? Do you like expect these bachelor type dates like roses, helicopters, <laughs> waterfalls? No, I don't. I hate at it all. when people ask those questions. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Is that a no, 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 it's no, 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 no. It's just more like those are literally the worst dates to have in the bachelor, first of all. And like <laughs> this unreasonable expectation that Chris would have as the host of the bachelor that somehow <laughs> he's got to bring in a helicopter or we'll just waterfall. He's very romantic. He is um, he's a guy's guy. He is a guy's guy, but he's also, I mean, I sort of feel that I'm reaping the benefits of someone who's worked on this show and learned how to talk to women for so long. Right. He is so communicative. He's so thoughtful. He's so uh, clear with his feelings and a good listener. I mean, you know, date an interviewer. We listen. <laughs> it's great. Uh, I don't expect bachelor dates from him, but... I will tell you, he's taken me on a helicopter. Oh, yes. yes. As Daddy Harris did one time. Was it everything you wanted it to be? On it, I really got to tell you, I'm going to get so sappy, but I could have fun with him anywhere. I have such a great time with him. I have so much fun with him, and I'm so happy with him if we're like, scanning through movies to find something to watch on TV or if we were in the helicopter. Oh, That's great. Yeah. But like heli- the helicopters <laughs> itself aren't very romantic. Also, you can get very like motion sickness in helicopters. You know what is weird? I mean, our little headsets weren't really working. It's not like easy to it's talk. It's a very to each unromantic other. setting. <laughs> if I'm being 100%. honest, hundred percent. I mean, especially when you have cameras in your face. Oh helicopters are small, so on every bachelor date, there's like oh, I never thought you're about You're right that. there, and there's the, a producer and at least one cameraman and an audio. It's, it's they have to be inches from your face. Yeah, so it's not in any way romantic. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can't like have an easy conversation. Your headphones going in and out. You're like, what? What? Yeah, no, did you see the water? Yeah, great. <laughs> it's, it's, I would not call it romantic. Well, I'm very excited for your love life. Thank you. Uh, w- let's get to know Lauren, the journalist. Okay. Where did you always uh, want to be? You're... You're a journalist, right? Is I'm that a what, journalist. Was that your major in college? It was. I was, um, my undergrad was in magazine journalism. Mag- There's a specific magazine. There is. I went to the University of Missouri School of Journalism. Oh, we're Not now. Romantic. We've just pulled up Nick. <laughs> you look a little motion and sick. Why are you shirtless in this helicopter, <laughs> Nick? Uh, that was, so, we were in uh, the Virgin Islands. Also, I don't need a reason. Um, <laughs> we're watching this clip <laughs> you of don't you need and a Andy reason in the helicopter. Have your shirt off. You don't look happy. <laughs> Uh, and you're shirtless. Is your I, back we, we sweaty both look and miserable. sticky? Well, I knew I was sending her home at that point. I had just sent home Whitney. Oh, oh, this uh, is Danielle. Yeah, oh. that was a two on one. She, I got to tell you, she, just the quickest what, glance, I thought that was Andy Dorfman, but that's Danielle too. Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we didn't have the most uh, striking conversations. You and Danielle. Yeah. Well, you're not talking in this clip we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the most we ever talked. Look, another helicopter. That right? was. Not the most two beautiful women. Not I didn't. I, mean, you, I think you said that wrong. But is this another? Wait. Well, no, they're like two beautiful women right. that I, I we I just I, I struggled having. This is that, another that, helicopter clip where no one's the talking. Same day, that, you probably can't hear each other. Uh, it's not a great setting. Your shirt's also, on here. That also is true. <laughs> yeah. so, funny. Uh, so magazine journalism. Yes, I went to the University of Missouri School of Journalism. Very good school. Um, And my undergrad was in magazine, and then I got my master's degree in broadcast journalism. Mm. Yeah. And how'd you end up in LA? 
Um, I, it's kind of weird. I've back and forth when I was uh, 22, when I just finished, was finishing up my master's, I moved here to work for Variety. I was doing um, like party and event coverage and movie premiere coverage for them. And then I got offered a job um, at a startup that I'd worked at while I was in school called Newsy. So I moved back to the Midwest to work for that startup. And then when I was at Newsy, uh, Entertainment Tonight reached out and offered me a job. So then I moved back to LA. So I've been back and forth on it. That's awesome. Yeah. So right. I know like a, do you feel like kind of a sense of, like your major or your career path is, is challenging. Um, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of grind to it. Uh, what are some words of wisdom you could offer to the people out there, men and women who, um, you know, like want to do what you're, you're doing because it's tough. Yes. It's like there's a lot of people become, don't get to do what you're doing. And I got to assume there were some, um, discouraging moments in your path to being mm -hmm. the bachelor, <laughs> the bachelor correspondent. Well, you know, it's hard because I've gone and spoken at my school and people want this really clear path, right? You know, like what were the steps you took to get there? And media is changing so much and it has changed so much over the past 10 years that there isn't a, as clear of a path as there used to be. It used to be that you'd start at a local news station and like work your way up market to market. And now I just tell people, um, lean into your brand, lean into your personality, say yes to work always until you really feel comfortable in a place where you can turn down work and feel okay. Uh, but I hustled so hard. I mean, I was at one point in LA working two jobs and um, I was taking classes and doing internships so I could get the classes for free at three different improv theaters. Um, because I was trying to kind of do like comedy and journalism at the same time. So just hustle and also take improv classes, which you have done and you and I have done at the same theater. I didn't know uh, you did comedy. Yeah. That's so funny. That makes sense. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So kind. Groundlings. And, did you do Groundlings or UCB? We, I've done both. I've do, I did IO, UCB and Groundlings. We had one of the same UCB teachers. Oh, really? Yes. I forget her name, but she's a lovely woman. <laughs> I think her name is Jess. <laughs> she, uh, yeah. Jess Eason. Jesse, yeah. mm -hmm. we love that Jesse. Yeah. She had a Liberty commercial. Yes, for a long time. And yeah, it would she, run during the batch. <laughs> all the time. She must have got paid for that because it was on yes. all the time. Oh, it helps to get a commercial, doesn't it? Yeah, that's great. Yes. But uh -oh. I, I do tell people to take improv classes because this job is so much about listening and asking good follow-up questions. And improv is all about listening and yes and. Also, if you're in sales. Uh, mm. And when I was working for Salesforce, it was, uh, they would, you know, they they did a good job of like paying for career development things. If you, and you could take improv classes and they'd pay for it. Recommend it. Uh, just because again, thinking on your feet, listening, um, a lot about the thinking, you know, stressful situations. It was, it's a, it's a great life skill. So yes. even if you're not trying to be a journalist or an actor or a comedian improv in your local, do it. Michael Scott, you know, <laughs> Oh no. Uh, no. meet some people. So now before you found love with mm -hmm. the great, Chris Harrison, mm -hmm. uh, what was dating like for you in LA? I think what actually happened was I just wasn't thinking about dating at all. And then stuff just kind of happened, you know, like it would be, I, I would start talking to someone at like an event and they'd ask so me out or really whatever. Weren't thinking about it. I wasn't some people will almost like in that sense, kind of swear it off. I don't want to date. I'm not ready to date. I was you like, just more... I'm just living. I'm not looking for a relationship and I'm not, not looking for anything. I was just like, I'm just going to focus on work and kind of see what happens. Yeah. I didn't swear off of it or anything, but I, you know, I mean, you're from the Midwest too. It's, it's a sort of different way of growing up in some other places in the country people get married younger it feels more n like normal or natural to get married a little bit younger then you come out to one of the coastal cities and it's like oh <laughs> this is weird like you know what i mean in terms of like well i mean pe people in la are single into their 50s and never get married and you just realize uh, people like live sort of differently all over the country yeah um why do you why do you think that is i mean i, I have no what is your theory uh well, I think the the coasts are more, are more progressive, and I think part of it, I think it's a little bit a combination of like priorities. Mm -hmm. Certainly, there's nothing wrong with or people have different priorities, right? There's that. I also think like, uh, especially in like more tradition, like the Midwest or the the Southern, you know, there's this a lot of getting married, especially back in the day, was a timing thing. 
You sure. know, like you you would have your first love and maybe that maybe that would or wouldn't work out, but like right around the time you would graduate college, whoever you were kind of in love with in that moment would the person you were like, I think I could get married. Yeah. You know, like and you do. Um, I think nowadays with people like I've read something that like millennials are getting married later in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably a good thing. Well, when you think about when marriage was invented as a concept, people died much younger. <laughs> that too. The timing of it. So like, we didn't, I got like six <laughs> years left. So if we could go ahead and have a family. We got to repopulate. Uh, my life expectancy is uh -huh. at 40. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think. You know, people are just, they're be, they're more okay with saying, wait, I don't, great that I'm in love with you, but yeah. are, do I want to spend the, they have a little bit more perspective at an earlier age nowadays, I think. Well, what's sort of weird about me, I guess, is when I was in college, I did not think I ever maybe wanted to get married. Really? Yeah, I didn't no, even think I was think very I, like, I don't know, I'm 25, I'll have three kids. Oh yeah, no, I I was like, I don't even know if I want kids, I don't know if I want to get married. And then you... Well, I mean, we're we're taking a bit of a dark turn and I don't want to get depressing, but um, I lost my dad when I was 22. And I think that changed my perspective. I suddenly wanted to be clinging to like family and to Makes something sense. real and grounded. Yeah. And uh, so that changed things for me. And then being married changed things for me. So, you know, all these life experiences happen. And uh, I've had people ask me before, like, what's your five-year plan? I don't have one. I think I've, I've just had experiences where I see how life can change so quickly that I really just try to live in the moment and stay really positive and do things that feel right for the person I want to be in the direction I want to go in, which is why, like, did I think about, do I want to start dating? No, I really didn't think about, like, you know, what do I want to do next? I want to jump into a relationship. I don't have those goals, I guess. Before you met Chris, like, were you pretty much single or were you like? Yeah, yeah. There were no, there was no like three month fling? Uh, I'd like, I dated other people a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. But single, yeah. And you know, then we had that weird DM. <laughs> when the, when's the, when's the wedding? Oh my gosh. Nick. I'm just kidding. You know, it's so funny. That's an annoying. Question. I've asked him that question. I don't even yeah. know how many times. Yeah, this is someone. This is I'm sitting someone who's been like oh. asked me some very direct questions. It's very direct. Yeah, the tables have turned. Very direct. <sighs> like why, Nick? Why can't you answer that? <laughs> I'll remember. I'll never forget. This was my favorite time I've ever interviewed you. You came up to me at a red carpet. You come up to me and you go, "Look, I know what questions you're going to ask me." And I was like. Okay, well, do you not want me to ask you? And you're like, no, let's do it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was like we were just both so on the same page because yeah. it was this place where you knew what everybody was asking you and you just had to keep powering through, poor Nick. I yeah. feel like that's your MO, just power through. <laughs> let's, just, let's just get through my life. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's just do it. Um, I, I kind of said that, you know what, this is a compliment that I'm going to pay you in a very weird, indirect way, which is what I like to do, is that, you're a smart person. And sometimes I, like in those interviews, I just wanted to like, and I know like, listen, you got a job to do. And sometimes the questions that you ask it are kind of like, hey, Lauren, you need to ask these questions. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I really appreciated the create the creative question that I hadn't been asked or like that Thank got me you. thinking. I always mm -hmm. thought you were capable of that. And so I was kind of like, hey, <laughs> what you got for me? You oh, know, the challenge. It was a challenge. Yeah. I, I love a challenge. I don't. I don't remember what we talked about. <laughs> probably. So why don't you guys break up? Um, uh. Do you regret it? Um, you know, stuff like that. I'm resetting. <laughs> I'm resetting. This is him right after Bachelor in Paradise, resetting for a new chapter. <laughs> Not I, I. I really didn't know I was going to be the Bachelor. You didn't. Why? No. Why? Why would I know that? I felt like you talked. About, no. No, no one thought I was going to be the bachelor. Chris didn't think I was going to be the bachelor. I didn't think I was going to be the bachelor. The people who made me the bachelor weren't planning on me being the bachelor. I mean, I very much believe, and I think we could have that situation on our hands this season that it can change up to the very minute. Well, totally. I mean, I remember Luke Pell, we interviewed him and he said, according to him, he said, I was about to get on the plane when I found out I was not the Which is totally believable. Yeah. Ooh. And he definitely was. Every season, they give at least two people a contract to sign to be the lead. With the stipulation, letting they're very open. We're, 
we're having this conversation with other people, but Which, they're very yeah. good at the, if the, the, sh- the bachelor producers, the thing they're best at more than anything is adjusting on the fly. And that's the, they that's have the sh- to, they have to, I mean, think that is what is so interesting to me right now about the show is how much things change week to week yeah. so quickly. Everything can yeah. adjust because whether they make a reveal in an episode or whether a reveal is made online and oh. all of a sudden mm. the vibe, the perception, so everything good. can change. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have a lot to say about this episode and I first want to get into, you did, I'm really into this whole Jed story. <gasps> yes. But before we get into oh, that, I want, I want to get to know Lauren a little bit more with do you know me? Our, favorite Our game. fun game that we are now playing. A game I've never played. It's new. new. It's, it's available new. on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, do uh, you know my me? my friend created it. Uh, oh. But I do love it because uh, it's fun little questions. Okay. I, I'm a big believer, especially in dating situations, is that you can uh, learn a lot from simple questions. I think in dating situations, people go into the Oh, tell me about yourself. Yeah. <sighs> I'm, oh. what do you do for work? Ugh. You know, yeah. it's just, and if you can kind of get away from some of those like hard hitting, not that they're hard hitting, but there's, <laughs> there's a lot of like pressure that comes with like, what do you do for work? Because yeah. there's an implication well, of like, there's how much money do you make is somewhere embedded in that question. It's too big of a question. You're like, are you yeah. going to be impressed with my job or what I do? Or like, where are you from? These are, but what about like, I would say get a little more specific. We're going to play this. So yeah. anyways, Rochelle and I, I'm going to ask these questions. Okay. Rochelle and I are going to have a competition of who <laughs> knows Lauren Zima better. The assumption is Don't maybe me, but this is really about reading someone because yeah. they're random. Nick, if you lose, hell. no, I was, I was just going to say. I so the Nick first question is, lose. we're going to answer, we're going to answer these right away. We did this twice. We're going to shorten it up a little bit, but is Lauren using someone else's Netflix account. I'm going to change a little bit. Have you ever? No. Have you ever? Have you ever used someone else's Netflix account on like an ongoing basis? Not like one time login, but for a period of time, you were like, I'm using, like, I'm logging in. Hold on. I'm, let me, before you answer, I'm going to say yes. Yes. Everyone in the universe has at one point. I mean, like, for over like three months where you were, yes, flat out not I'm saying yes for, also. I have. I have never. Oh, really? I that's have logged in. Impressive. Like, but like, <laughs> that's mean? a weird, like it's seven, eight, eight what, does 10 bucks a month? You can't, aff- like it's a weird thing. It's just, it, it's hard to pay for something you don't have to pay for. Do you mean the person <laughs> doesn't know you're using it? Ooh. Either or. But like you knowingly like didn't pay for your own yes. Netflix that you weren't in a relationship with. Oh. Now you're adding on so much. Well, well like, he's remembering. He's like, she was married, though. <laughs> but like, if, you like were, if you were Are married you or da- living with someone, then sure. So you don't need two people paying for Netflix. Okay, what's the answer? Then my answer is no. I've never done that. <gasps> we both lose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good for you, Lauren. Who's Netflix did you think I was together? using? No, but like, again, like Rochelle clearly has. Apps. I've never paid for Netflix in sure. my life. <laughs> Whose Netflix are you using? <laughs> I think I'm using my dad's. Okay. Why not? You're an okay. adult. I'm not going to pay for it if I don't have to. So okay. sue me. <laughs> so sue me. <laughs> Put it on my tombstone. Uh, not paying if I don't have to. I, I, I feel like people are going to be with me on this. No. I right will, in. Oh, I will say, but she knows. I'm using my sister's like direct TV login okay. for cable oh, apps. It comes okay. Out. So, yeah. yeah. But she is aware, but it is totally hers. <laughs> So I'm doing that. Yeah. that. See? It's the digital age, baby. <laughs> it's tough. Huh. But you know, we are a family. I'm also on my best friend's Spotify account. See? Oh and my I, God, you don't. And I'm going to tell you something dark. She kicked her husband off for me. <gasps> she That's, did. Like there, I mean. How does that work? Like she has a family plan and her husband was also on the plan. She was like, I kind of want Lauren to be on our Spotify. So she was like, oh. you can only have so many names. So I'm on her family plan with like her and her siblings. What? You, Dark. you can have a family plan with Spotify. Yeah, she wants Lauren's playlist. Disclaimer: <laughs> You can listen to someone's playlist without being in their account. Okay, look, tomato, tomato. Female relationships are very important. <laughs> they are. They are. Uh, that's a, a, a piece of advice I will never not stand by. Yes, Prioritize girl. your friendships. Yes. So uh, either way, we're tied. Okay, yeah, we're tied. Yeah. Um, Sorry, let's move on. Has Lauren ever been arrested? And I mean, even handcuffed or like been apprehended more than it? Yeah. Have you ever been arrested? Because she's trying to give, trying, throw us off. She absolutely bait. has been arrested. No. 
I have never been arrested. Nick, what do you, what do you think I've been arrested for? He was now, just you trying know what to spice we're learning? it up. We're well, like a, uh, maybe there's a DUI or maybe, what do we learn? No. No. maybe you, like college, you know, people get arrested for peeing in bushes in you college. Know, can I tell you I didn't drink at all in college? I knew she's got her shit together of anybody Thank I've you. ever met. I want to be clear that I drink now, but I did not drink in college. <laughs> have you, uh, have you ever hooked up with someone who is older than 50? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have not. Oh, oh, thanks so for letting us guess. <laughs> oh, I forgot the game. I was going to guess yes. So I, I would have got that wrong. What would I? Well, how old Chris? He's 47. Oh, close. <laughs> how, Lauren, how old are you? I'm yeah. 31. How do you feel like in how sure. age differences with men and women? Mm -hmm. I mean, we joked, uh, yeah. Rochelle likes to, to tease on me a lot about some of the, the age. Uh -huh. Low hanging fruit. Uh, how young you've gone? Yeah, so, how well, but okay. like not you know, old. At certain point, but like I, for me, it's yeah. like a more maturity thing. At certain a certain point, like I, like if, it's hard for me to meet someone who's under twenty five. And is it? No, no, it's very extreme, very easy, extremely. To meet them. Let me finish my thought. Okay. <laughs> and, and consider, like, if Look I get around you. <laughs> <laughs> no, all I meet is people under twenty five. It's hard right. for me to meet someone, and then like, let's say there's an, an initial like. You're like a uh, meet cute at a at the craft services. At the craft services, yeah. and then I find out she's younger than twenty five. It's hard for me to even like, where is this gonna go? Because I want to oh. be with someone who's like oh like ready potentially like kid like a. But Lauren's not. No, I'm just saying. But yeah, like yeah. in terms of you and Chris are what that's fifteen years apart. Yeah, and I you know I'm. Like I, it's easy for me to meet like even a girl twenty six. That's a you know if I meet a, that's a. How do you, how do you, what are your opinion on, on that? My, I sometimes get uncomfortable speaking to no, it because okay. I feel like sometimes I don't, I don't know if Chris gets self-conscious about it. I can, I get no. self-conscious. My women friends like to tease me <laughs> about dating younger women. Well, here's what I will say. For me, it is all about life experience and the life place that you're in. I mean, I, I do think that, uh, <sighs> This is sort of a hard thing for me to talk about because I always worry about making other people uncomfortable in it. But like losing my dad at a young age totally changed my maturity level. I right. suddenly had to sure. step up in all these new and different ways with my family. A lot with my family changed. So it aged me up in a lot of ways. Gave you some perspective. Yeah, completely. So uh, from, you know, and I had that experience when I was 22. Some people are in their 60s and have never had certain life experiences. So I think it's all about life experience, the place that you're at, what you want out of life. Um, I do think that, like, I see where you're coming from. On, like, at your early 20s are such a time of change. Yeah. And so I see that and I get that. Um, but at the same time, I look at everything on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. But I see where you're coming from. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that with them. No. And again, like, I think at, at a certain point, as you get older, like, it's... It's a wash. Well, right. Like, I mean, <laughs> kind of to Lauren Lauren's point, after, like, 30, like, we're always growing and maturing, and so I'm kind of making a joke. But, like, after 30, you're kind of who you're, you I are. I think that's fair. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you might develop and change and, and, and have a whole, like, even it, it was fascinating talking to my parents when they were here about, like... Uh, their faith, they still have it, but it's certainly a lot different at 60 than it was at 30. They are more progressive and more open, so they have changed as people. Yeah. Right. But that's, so that's not to say like they aren't different people. But at, yes, uh, at between 18 and like 25, mm -hmm. there's still so much like there, figuring yourself out. You're totally it, right. At that time, you're figuring out who you are, but then once you have yourself figured out, it is experience that affects and changes you. But I, I think you're right that you're like core so self. So that's like if I meet out. someone who's like say 23, my reluctance of like pursuing that is I don't really wanna be a part of their development as a human being. And I applaud you on that as a, trepidation. <laughs> you know, like I, you know, like it feels like I don't wanna, I wanna meet someone who confidently is who they are and we will grow as a couple, but I don't wanna be a part of that like. I get that. Yeah. Do you, um, do you think he should be more open to the younger ladies? Is that oh, what no. Oh, okay. I got you. I was confused. No, on he has like, you have like an age cap of old, how old you'll date. I do not. You oh. said that the other week. I did not. What's your age cap? Mm. Is it 30? <laughs> I dated someone who was two years older than me a couple months ago. Oh, and by the way, year, I've dated people younger than me too. Yeah. Um, 
I don't no, I only I, I have an age minimum I try to abide by. I don't do a great job all the time. <laughs> but I have no age cap in the sense that like because anyone who's older than me in uh, in terms of a maturity level would but the the kid element is obviously something that like right. again plays a right. Adds another if I were to meet someone at this point in my life, if I were to date someone let's say who's 2 years older than me, it's fair to wonder do they want kids and if they do how quickly do we have to have kids? The person I dated who was older than me had a kid. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of like, yeah. well, maybe they're like good with that. I don't know. So there were things about right. dating someone older than me that I had to, I never even considered before because yes. like my whole dating experience, regardless of their age was uh, they hadn't had kids. And so they, the assumption is they probably at some point hopefully do. Mm -hmm. And it was like when, you know, and so. Yeah. It, life experience, life place, timing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, the three. That's are we so still good. tied? Uh, I screwed up that one. Yeah. No, no. Wait, Sorry. am I winning? I think you're winning. I would have. Oh, shoot. We lost <laughs> track. I would have, what, would, what would you have said? I would have said she had. Been arrested? No. Slept with someone older. I would have said had. So we're still, we're still tied. Why? Why, are we Why not? This I think I got two right. Okay. Why not? No, well, I, I mean, because yeah. like, you're, 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 I mean, you're. Because I thought Chris was older than fifty. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, you Just did. No shade. No oh. shade. No tea. Oh, no I, shade. No, I, I, I knew he. I'm was not in good his 40s. with ages. Um, I. Uh, no, I, I just, just assumed like before you met Chris, like you, uh, you know, you were a mature person who, like, I did think had you met a good-looking fifty-year-old yeah. guy in L.A., which you're down. Um, like, I don't think you would have had that. a problem with it. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. It is yeah, silver it, fox. It, take that. Uh, next question: Does Lauren know who won the most recent Super Bowl? I'm going to say yes because she's yes. dating Chris Harrison. Obviously, because she's in I don't pop know. Culture. I don't know how, how much of a sports fan she is. And What's if she would have known that has she She looks not... like no. Zero clue. <gasps> <laughs> oh, so, no. I am. You don't know who won. <gasps> who won the Super Bowl? Is this the Patriots? This is just a guess. Was it the yes, Patriots? but you didn't. The Patriots won the Super Total Bowl. Total gas based on the fact. <laughs> Super Bowl 50. Would you have said, oh, we both are still tied. Oh, freaking A. Super Bowl So, 52. lesson learned. Don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, of, wow. We really don't know anything about you. She has a very, what I, here's ah. what I learned about that question. Yeah. Niche. Niche interests. While she is dating someone who is a diehard sports fan, Chris, before, for those of you who don't know, who before he was the person who made people fall in love, he was a reporter for the Dallas Cowboys. He's a huge oh, Cowboys wow. fan. He's sports a sportscaster. He was a sportscaster. <gasps> cool. Sexy. Uh, he's a guy's guy. And one would think that she dating I know. this guy, at least I would, but it tells me they have a very independent relationship. Love that. 100%. Beautiful. We, and you know what? He is... I have never dated someone like him, though, who is he's so conscious of me having a good time and so wants to make sure that I'm like enjoying myself in any situation that when the Super Bowl happened, we went to a Super Bowl party because like, I guess that's what you do. I don't know. Like, I don't really partake. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But he like he like took a little money and like put it in a bet for me so I could like be active and enjoy myself and whatever. I yeah. I don't even know what that was. I think yeah. there was some kind of grid, but yeah. he really makes sure I have a good time. But no, I don't know anything about sports. And one thing I love about our relationship is we both have our stuff. We have a lot of things we enjoy to do together. And it's just like see what you can learn by asking if they do the <laughs> Super Bowl is what person yeah. kind of relationship they have. he loves golf. And every, anytime I enjoy something to do with golf with him, he, Gives me a glass of wine in my hand. Have you ever? Has Lauren? Did we? Would you? Did, are we, we're still. Well, yeah, we're tied. We're, this is the. This is the final tiebreaker. No. Tie two, has Lauren ever taken a Uber pool? Yes. Mm, I'm gonna say no. Never done it. <gasps> Sounds so. Wow! Look at you, high society. Oh, you pretentious. One percent. Oh, is that? I, you know why I never do it? Doesn't it take a long time? I yeah, just assume it would take a long time. I uh, I took an Uber pool. You uh, did. <laughs> I took an Uber pool. It's, You're like to get here. <laughs> it, no, I did it for fun. I did it. I took an Uber pool uh, immediately after filming The Bachelor, and, and I got into LA. I was just kind of wow. like, wow, whoa, bold move. I was just kind of like, I, was, I had done it before. Okay. Did uh, Vanessa know? <laughs> who knows how that was. Nick, I'll be been. honest. Did you want a little attention? <laughs> yeah, it looks like you want no. a little candy in the <laughs> no, back seat. <gasps> no, it was more like, here's the thing about Uber Pool. When I first moved to LA, I, I had my car, I had, my whole life was in Chicago. And so yeah. I came out here and I didn't have a car out here. I had it out there and I had my condo there. And, Oh my God, I forgot about this time. This is flooding back to and, this time uh, in your life. Yes. I was Ubering all over LA, which can get really expensive. And before Uber, there was a moment where 
Uber pool like was invented and I think everyone was kind of like well, like what is this like, let's no try this way I'm yeah. going to get in a cab with it's already <laughs> enough that I have to be driven by this you know but you wouldn't do it and I had this uh, friend who was a, a a woman and an attractive woman and I just assumed oh. that she oh no but I my point out is is like it, I guess her look Ow. had nothing to do with it but she oh was, really <laughs> Sounds like they did. No, it, <laughs> I, I point this out. I point this out because I kind of judged her for being the type of person who would be like, I, oh, I don't want to get she like. Could do it. You I wouldn't do it. feel Very comfortable. She, she, she. Like she would like. I don't want to like put myself in a situation how guys. I you know, and that's why I say that. And she was like, well, why don't you don't Uber pool? And it was very much like, well, if she can do this, then clearly wow. I can do this. And this Man. was after I had been on like The Bachelorette twice. But at that point, she's telling me, she's like, dude, nine times out of 10, you're still the only person. So it was before like Uber pool. Oh, really. yeah, I've never had that experience. And so. Wow. So you got out of your comfort zone for this beautiful woman. Yeah. Wow, well, the job. trick is if you're ever going to Uber pool and you have the time, you got to sit shotgun. You sit shotgun, you put your headphones on. Oh. And that way you don't have to talk to the people in the back. The driver's driving and you're like... I don't you... have time. That's why I don't do that. Yeah, but you anyways, don't, you I don't st- have time, Lauren. Did you get <laughs> recognized? Uh, no, I sat shotgun. Wow. And I, um, good story. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so Lauren is, Lauren's too good um, yep. to take an Uber pool. She's a little snobby. I'm too busy. I've learned. I have stuff to do. She's a little, <laughs> a little snobby. Uh, yeah. Okay. Final question. Wait, you won that. And I didn't. I didn't. Can I say, it's actually dangerous for me to take Ubers because I go into interview mode uh, and I interview the driver. Oh, I never do that. And before I know it, like this man is telling me about like how he's yeah. sending money to his and ex because bad. of his daughter. And then Ugh. I'm like wrapped I, up. I, like it's dangerous I always for me. go in with headphones. <laughs> so it's like, even if I'm not listening to music. <laughs> Sorry, man. I can't. Yeah. I got to learn. Uh, on a call. Yeah. Um, last question. Has Lauren ever, not necessarily with chris so you don't have to but uh, has lauren ever used handcuffs in bed oh that face makes me think yes <laughs> i think that's a yes so i guess yeah oh no oh no or she's just blushing about the question in general were they uh, furry looks like she can picture them right in her mind's eye right now uh, okay all right so lauren, <laughs> lauren super uh, and uh, i have never Okay. Michelle, have you? No. You haven't? No. <laughs> I haven't. Look at your face. I don't need the extra trimmings. I'm fine with the meal as it is. Wow. wow. Who doesn't love a side dish? <laughs> so Lauren Look, has definitely we, used handcuffs. The game Do You Know Me really has really done its job. Lot. Yeah. Really, it tells a lot. I I, I endorse I, Do You Know Me. I have never... I'm not... I, I have never had them been used on me. I also have never used them on anyone else. I... I, I, I don't want to be tied up. I'm not big on the whole like submission oh, thing. Oh, maybe you should then. Um, oh, and so. I also feel weirdly yeah. comfortable. Uh, and yet you'll take an Uber pool. <laughs> <laughs> How is there a correlation? I see it. <laughs> Look at her face. I see it. Oh yeah. my God. Oh, you're like, let me get in this enclosed space. Oh. Strangers. Well, thanks okay. for playing, Lauren. <laughs> Do you know me? I love uh, that game. Yeah, check it out on Amazon. Yes. Nick won. Uh, Nick knows you. But okay. Let me see. Oh, Lauren, you, uh, I'm very fascinated about this Jed story. Oh, yes. You had the pleasure of interviewing, pleasure, I don't know if it was a pleasure, of of, of interviewing his accuser. Yes, we were her first, oh, are we calling her an accuser? I guess she's accusing him right, of some she stuff. she is, right. Um, or she's telling their story. Um, and we were her first on-camera interview, Entertainment Tonight, yes. Do you believe her? Just at her story, yeah, I don't have a reason to not believe her. Just a, kind of a yes yeah. or no? You, yes, yeah. I believe her, yeah. I mean, she sent us a text exchange between the two of them, not that that can't be faked, but I, I do believe her, yes. I think it would be wild if at this point, when she's going around telling this story to multiple media outlets, that no one who knows Jed, like a friend or a family member, wouldn't have come forward and said, this person is lying and this is crazy. I I, I think that would have happened by now. If she's yeah, because then, like, I guess like, the, the fair, like the playing the other side of Jed, he's not allowed he he's under contract and he's yeah. not allowed to he's not allowed to like speak to this yes i mean and- i guess he could and he could go rogue but definitely mm-hmm. whatever's going on there's people uh the uh, on on the producers who are he's not allowed to do that and 100%. so he would I mean, be breaking rules if he were to say something oh or, he's not allowed to come and defend himself for saying anything well you he's can't, not allowed to give interviews yeah and so you're- listen it, it's a w- different world because social media is what it is with instagram stories 
he could have easily gone and like, hey guys, this is bullshit. Luke did. Luke took to Instagram to address some yeah, stuff. So yeah, so like that happens a lot, and he, so he could do that. <gasps> I'm sh- I'm certain he's being advised not to, um, for whatever reason, just because I don't, you know, um, but uh, yeah. Mm. Yes, I believe I, her. I believe her. I do believe her. Yes. Um. You know, some people were kind of tweeting at me and saying like, "I'm defending Jed or something." I all that I've said about this is, look, Jed, as we've said, cannot do interviews. So I will just wait until I have fully formed an opinion on the situation. Until Dude, I can interview him, and quite frankly, I want to grill him about here's it. Here's the bit. here's the thing about Jed though that I I couldn't. I mean. You really come across poorly on this episode mm. based off the information that we it know. It was so hard to watch. It is so it's hard bizarre to watch now. and painful and dark. Um, but yeah. he, the problem I had, like this whole half-truth thing in the sense that like it makes, it's a, you know, this whole Jed came out with this like, hey, you know, Hannah, I just want to be honest. And, and I, you know, I, I, I was, I came here for the platform. You know, and he basically tried to sell himself as an honest person by admitting that he wasn't being honest, but he was still telling a lie while he was doing it, I which mean, makes it worse. It's like a half truth. One of the lyrics in the song he sang to her was, I'll never tell a lie. I the mean, darkness the factor. But I mean, specifically, uh, like, I see what you're don't saying. you think it makes it worse when you try when like it's a manipulation tactic even in any relationship you're like you try to own up to a mistake but you do it specifically because you feel guilt more importantly and specifically my guess he's worried he's going to get caught so he tries to own up for something but he completely leaves out the uh, most important detail do you think he told her about the girl and they just edited it out no No. not at all Uh, it's like for example let's assume think of a situation where a guy like a guy or girl cheats on their girlfriend let's he goes to Vegas and he like meets a girl and he like made out with a girl right it's the that that guy what jed did to hannah it's like he comes home he feels a lot of guilt he maybe he's worried one of his friends for talk and so he goes to his girlfriend says hey babe i just i need to come clean i met this girl and i i nothing happened i just want you to know nothing happened but like mm, i was definitely yes. flirting and i was inappropriate and I, I it made me realize and completely leaving out that he like yeah. Grinded with her and made out with her and maybe hooked up. And so that th- people do that all the time. Yeah. Icky. And and then it's really icky because you feel like of course and then that person feels like that they absolutely are telling the truth because why would he make that up? People say that all the time. Like why would he say that if he did left that out? Anyway, yeah. So I just think it makes it ten times worse what uh, what Jed is doing. It makes it that much ugly if assuming this is all true. Mm-hmm. And I gotta say with 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 her, I know the, the, there's a side of people saying, uh, well, she is complicit in this. Mm-hmm. She is, but she, what, she's more naive than anyone. I got to say it because I'm glad if it's true, she came, it came out. And I'm, I'm not saying she's totally innocent in this, but any reasonable person, if they put themselves in a situation, not knowing what this world is like, and they were dating someone for three or four months, and that person surprised them and said, hey, man, I've been like, I got this opportunity and, but it's just for show and I love you and this is a show. I think we all righteously want to be like, oh, we wouldn't, we would break up. But like this girl is seemingly was in love mm-hmm. with Jed and, and feeling these feelings. And according to her, it's the first person she said, I love you too. Like, let's not discount like who know We want to always believe the yeah. people we love. We want to believe that they love us the most. And then for Jed to like seemingly go on the show, go far. He's like, and watching this episode, her Hannah, it seems like for the first time I see Hannah actually falling for someone mm-hmm. other than, than Luke P. She likes making out with all these guys, but this is the first time it seemed like Jed was in, had the power dynamic between those two. Oh. I, I mean, she was opening up to him and he was telling her to open up. I mean, how often do you see mm. the cast telling the lead to open up more? Oh. When she was telling him that it's hard for her to be with the other guys and she's sort of looking over at him, those little to me moments. That she it was felt, like saying, I'm going to pick you. It felt very real to me. Yeah. Just me watching her. I don't want to predict the thoughts in her head, but it looked like her feelings for him were very real. It seemed, and again, like we may be missing stuff, but that conversation really made it seem like, other than Luke Peach, Jed is the only one she's developing real feelings for. Mm. More than like, I like making out with you and you're sweet and you're nice, but like she was being vulnerable with Jed. And what I'm saying, if you're this girl, like, and he, yeah, go like he's gone far. 
How would you feel? Like, clearly she's loving the intention. She's a country music singer. But like every any normal person, if they were like dating someone, someone goes on the show and doesn't come back, you would be pissed. You would be hurt. And so I don't think I'm I'm very more defensive of this girl rather than think that she is she. You know, like she's not necessarily like she's right. been she's been manipulated by Jed. Well, and, and now just, she's kind of out to get him, which I'm, I get. I get. I'm at the point now where I don't want to put him versus her because yeah. we've heard so much about this. Yeah. She's done multiple interviews now. At the end of the day, it's a mess. They both made mess. bad choices. It's a mess. But I, and I'm certainly not defending Jed. And I totally see what you're saying. That I think, and I, you know, I talked to her, and she said. What she told me was, I kind of didn't think the show was real. I was, I was doing something that I thought I needed to do for Which someone I love. Which is a loved. fair. I totally believe that. There's a big perception out there, and I see that with people I've interact with, is that people, yeah, do believe it's not necessarily real. It's, it's and more, more so now that you have with with social media and paradise. More so now, pre, even cast members clearly are treating this show like a career opportunity. And I think in the past, it was a naiveness of like, an, it was an experience, not necessarily a career playbook. Well, I think now it is. You're definitely getting more people treating it as a career opportunity because everybody knows I'm going to go on the show and at least get X amount of Instagram followers. Well, they, so most of them are disappointed by what they, <laughs> but yeah. like, yes, in, what I'm saying is, and so I totally believe, I don't think that was a, a, a disingenuous comment by her. No, I don't think so either. I'm just at the point now where, you know, this has all come out. I just don't know how much more we're going to get. We still have a month of the show left. And oh, what is a little... It's going to be brutal to right? watch. Well, and what's really strange to watch, I, right, is... great TV. It's, oh, it's going to be great TV. And this whole situation makes it great TV because now I, I don't know if I've ever looked forward more to right? the, the whether he's on the, the Men Tell All or the AFR he's, or whatever. I'm fascinated. He's, to he's my front runner now because like Luke's been such a mess and that like she can't pick him. Yeah. They've, in the previews, they make it seem like, I mean, who knows, but it sounds like they're showing showing us sending Luke home yeah. and as great as Tyler is and as good looking and as charming I'm as he is. I'm still holding out for Tyler. He's a, listen, I just, listen to me. And I, when Tyler said in this episode, I sincerely want the best for Hannah. I, I, I thought I believed two very distinct things in that comment. I believed absolutely that he thinks that I absolutely believe that Tyler thinks that he wants the best for Hannah. Yeah. I believe that he truly thinks that Luke P is not the best for Hannah. And I truly believes he hopes it's anyone but him. Oh, anyone but Tyler? Listen, I, I think he really likes her. And I, I'm sure if Tyler were listening to this, he would probably be pissed off by that. And I don't, but like when you watch it back, this is a guy, all the guys, even Peter's a great guy. And this is the first time like, it's hard to make about Luke because, I mean, I'm Jed because of, of this story, mm -hmm. but like, and like I don't agree with almost anything uh, that comes out of Luke P's mouth in terms of how he s speaks to to Hannah, but he is seems to be the only one who just looks like he he's losing his mind because he likes her so much in a sense of like I don't believe it doesn't seem like, I don't believe any of these guys it, I I could be wrong is what I'm watching that they're going to be heartbroken truly heartbroken when they go home really. How do I do is someone who's been in that position, like a yeah, Blake from know. last year or Garrett, when you watch the show, when I mean, like, listen, I think everyone should have their heart broken at some point in their life. It, no, it's seriously, it's like it's you a, learn, you grow. No, but not you even that. It's, just, it. it's like yeah. a weird fucked up high in a sense. If you can't like relate to the experience of at least in the moment of like literally not knowing if you're going to be okay. Like that's a life experience that you have out. And I just don't see any of these guys like really being afraid. Mm -hmm. I saw that with Garrett and Blake last year. And that has nothing. I see that with Luke P. Whether I agree with like things he says, I think Luke P right now is so all in and truly believes that it's Hannah and all these guys. I'm just not seeing it. I'm seeing the guys who really care about Hannah, who think she's great, who think she's beautiful and smart and funny. And I think they all hate Luke P and they're all bros. Yeah. It's like, they, would you, could you really give Peter a hug for getting a rose? If you it's were, just like, yeah. it's great that they're cool. And sometimes yeah. the show does that where it's just like, they're way too excited to support. Yeah. And I get, <laughs> I gotta say, well, I don't agree with Luke P like it is not wrong for Luke P to s be happy that Mike went home. We're talking about mm -hmm. these guys who yeah. are seemingly talking about. I, agree with I that. can get engaged to Hannah in three to four weeks. <laughs> yeah, and yet they're so right happy that. Oh, 
there's nothing wrong with that. What the problem with Luke P is the shaming and the judgment well, right. and the, and the and condescension and the, and the massage. And yeah, that's that, what also makes it fascinating to watch both Luke P and Jed on camera is because if we didn't know any of this about Jed, right. he would be right. saying all the right things and we would be like, wow, they have real feelings yeah. for each other and they really seem into each other. And wow, yeah. Luke P on camera, I have an easier time <laughs> not an easier time, but I've judged Luke P more because I am seeing with my own eyes the things he's saying that I don't agree with and that I find problematic. And Jed is saying all these things and we're seeing, like we said, real feelings from Hannah. And I have to say, I, I kind of thought of, from the drag race date, I thought that Jed might be the guy for Hannah because she has said to me in different interviews, you know, she wants like this, like kind of classic Southern guy, but modern. And that's kind of what Hannah is. And oh, I think Jed is dang, that's Jed's giving point. those vibes, you know, like lives in Nashville. He's got that charm, but he's also yeah. this like open coming across this open minded guy. I'm pretty sure Jed <laughs> used a line from one of his songs. What, what did you say, Rochelle? What about her bod? No, the something about Earth or the oh the, oh, the falling through the Earth thing was yeah. that from one of his songs? Do you, oh, oh, I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's got. We should it. listen I, to his song no right way, now. <laughs> there is no way that that line is not written on some sort of note. And when he's like pretending he's writing songs, and it's like my heart, the Earth you're, opened you're, up and my heart fell through. But <laughs> I agree with you, Lord. I think she, Jet, Jet is clearly the front. Uh, uh, just from watching the show, Jet is. This episode, this episode was episode, very telling. It it's it was a yes to me. It was like. Well, they did the Tyler dirty with that pickled herring and the horses. I was literally oh, him dirty. I would have thrown up. I thought to myself, I wonder if, and you can tell me more that you know more than me, but I was like, are the producers worried that yeah. he's coming across too perfect? They so they were like, him. make him awkward on a horse yeah. and throw up from a fish. She was literally, <laughs> she could have been more unattracted to him at that point. She was just like, God. It was a side of Tyler we've never seen. I, I really felt I was watching him fall from grace and nearly fall off a yes. horse. No, I, no, I don't think the producers the think that way. That I mean, listen, it, I, I, I am very... Tyler's a very impressive guy. Even like <laughs> you look at his social media, he's an impressive. He's organizing he's, group runs yeah. in Central Nick's Park. To you, no, I, I've always been a fan of Tyler. Yeah. And he is objectively impressive. Where I'm, I, again, I think <laughs> yeah. to myself, like I wasn't doing this at 25, 26. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's also a guy, you know, in a sense that like you are definitely seeing the best parts of Tyler. And again, I don't want to take any way thing away from all like the the right things Tyler has said. But again, I. I just don't see a guy who's truly gonna, who's afraid of losing something. And from personal experience in that world, imagine falling in love with someone and then be, and watching him date a bunch of other guys who are threats. No human being can be that chill yeah. in that situation. And that doesn't mean you have to, and that's not an excuse for Luke to say the things he's saying. You can like try to, you can, you can be respectful and calm. Like Blake, for example, when Blake got broken up with Becca, he was respectful. He also was losing his shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying like, these guys' ability to be like so fucking cool tells me about the stakes that they re really have or maybe don't have. Because mm -hmm. it's easy to say the right thing. I think there's part of them that is just so excited when like about the idea of Luke P finally leaving. Like they want to get rid of him so bad. Sure. But I totally see what you're but saying. But if they were it's like... They were all very excited that Peter had a rose. They and there's cared a little too bit much. If there was there. another guy who was truly like mm -hmm. it, it, in it, he would just be like, listen, all I care is about me and her. And like, yeah. this is all like, it'll all work itself out. Mm -hmm. And I just don't, I'm not seeing that. And it happens every season. And again, guys, it's easy to fall in love with your peers because that's who is friends because that's who you're seeing more. So of. having been The Bachelor after this episode, which I felt was very telling and we saw three people go home, who would you pick right now to be the next Bachelor? Who would be the I, best? I would, and I say that question asking who would be the make the best. I would have show. picked Mike before this episode. I think, if I'm being honest, I really you know I think the Bachelor needs to have the first Black Bachelor. You don't think he has a shot still? Sure, of course he has a shot. I mean, as a fan, I think it was a very poor showing for Mike. No. It was it was kind of a weak. Why? It was a weak goodbye. I don't. Again, he's he, like this. I'm ready to get married to you. Based on what? Like, there's no connection between the two. So now he's like just saying things, and I didn't like it. Just see, it sounded. He came across to me as disingenuous, and I just. It was just. I've always gotten a friend. I got a friends vibe. It was just like I just. I didn't think the show went out of their way to have like this big. Sometimes there's just like a big goodbye and this emotional moment. Right. It, right. Mike's goodbye was very forgettable, um, and so just objectively gracious. Great, fine. I'm not. There's nothing. I'm not. I'm not criticizing Mike the person, right? right. Uh, uh, or his goodbye. I'm just saying from a fan standpoint, it was forgettable, 
And I don't, it didn't seem like he was a priority for the show. So, so I guess I would say, uh, well, after, minus the Jed drama, I would have said Peter, Jed, and Tyler. Uh, who are you picking? Who, so who, again, the, Tyler who's making or Peter? the best television show? Okay. Tyler or Peter, clearly. They're the, you know, from what the fans are saying, you know, Tyler, Tyler or Peter. Yeah. Well, I mean, I always, and I talk to people about this a lot, like, look, Colton didn't necessarily have the biggest following before he was Bachelor. He was up there. But he made... He was the most charismatic. But a lot of people were calling on Twitter so adamantly for other people. But Colton made for the best television show. He had a great story. So I want the best TV show. I think, like, I am really excited. I don't know much about Peter. That's the thing. I feel like I need to know more about both Tyler and Peter, and I really want to see emotional moments from both of them. I need it. Tyler is too collected. For for a Bachelor, it's almost like, great, you're charmed you're charming and yeah. you're like you're smooth and you're good looking but yeah. like but you know we got we got more ups yeah. i don't know i'm i'm i hate say i need the tears i want to see those tears from them i do um well let's take some fan questions before lauren has to wrap up <gasps> and uh yeah hey thank you for having me nicole thanks for what's your time with me Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. Hi, what's your name? How are you? Good, how are you? What's your name? My name's Kyla. Kyla, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, I'm Nick, this is Lauren. Hi Kyla, Lauren Zima, so nice to meet you. We also have Rochelle in the room. Hi. Nice to meet you. What's up? Hi. What's your question? Hi. Um... So I've been dating my boyfriend for five years now, and a little over a month ago, I caught him playing with himself to a picture (laughs) of a girl we both knew right beside me in bed. So um, I kicked him out, and we broke up for a couple weeks, but now it's like everything's back to normal. Um, Eventually, I let him move back in. Wait, and, uh, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting. What do you mean by it's back to? <laughs> Wait, so you were living? It's not back to normal. You were living with him? I, yeah, I we like somewhat resolved things, and I let him move back in. And um, but I'm just basically trying to figure out things mentally on my part. Okay. And um, I just I would like an opinion from someone who doesn't know the situation, but just a stranger, basically. And um, and he used her you Instagram to consider that cheating. Kyla, I think it's very problematic that it was someone you both know. <laughs> yeah. 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 So wait. So hold on. So you walked him in, in on him masturbating. No, she was laying in bed with him. No, he he was in bed right next to me. Masturbating. To a picture yeah. of someone they both know. And he assumed you were sleeping. He thought that I was sleeping. Yeah. A bold motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's hard to understand why someone would do that. That's just and really And so, stupid. like, you looked over. He's holding the. Is he was just like a picture of her and just rubbing one. Actually, out. I forgot to tell you, he was on my phone to get to her account. So, Kyla. I mean, he assumes you're sleeping, but like that—that that doesn't make it. it that it's—it just makes it weirder. But I guess. Nothing. And how did he explain himself as to why he um, would do that? Well, basically. I knew, like, I was turned over, and I knew exactly what he was doing, and when I turned over, he clicked the phone off, and I, I, like, he was just immediately saying, I'm not watching porn, I'm not watching porn, so I grabbed the phone from him, I put him outside the room, and um, I went on my phone, and what popped up was a picture of this girl in a bikini on Instagram, and, uh, just the whole time he tried to explain to me that it wasn't him watching porn. And I'm like, yeah, I would argue that him watching porn would have been a better. That's than- my thing too. I think it's, I think it's yeah, a big it's problem that you know her, Kyla. I would say, just go ahead and yeah. get yourself out of that relationship. I'm sorry. I'm being really blunt, <laughs> but you deserve better. You uh, deserve better, babe. You do. Uh, that's definitely, <laughs> I mean, ultimately probably, I mean, I, you've been living with him. Uh, how long you've been named for five years. Um, yeah. It's it's so like yes it's just like it's weird that you were looking at a picture I mean listen as a if we're trying to be objective here do like 
do men and women, if we're all being honest, if we're been in a relation, is this your first, are you guys, how, how you don't seem that old. So you've been in for five years. How old are you? Is it your first boyfriend? I'm 21. Okay. We're both 21. So like, yeah, you guys are both super young. You've pretty much all you've ever known. I am not defending him at all, but like we've all like, I'm sure in our brains have thought of a fan, have have fantasies. Like I don't sit there and pretend that I, I'm sure you've saw another guy and thought he was attractive and maybe you've fantasized him like getting the picture of your friend. It, it does make it a lot worse and it makes it like kind of tangible mm -hmm. in a sense. But feels, it's a weird thing. It feels more emotional. It feels more emotional yeah. because it's like, it's a, and I'm not defending him, but I guess I, I mean, we've all been there where you think about you, our mind goes and like we, we Lauren and I both joked to go, it would have been better if he's watching porn. Yeah. Right. And in, yeah. a, and in a weird way, like had you had, let me ask, let me ask you this. Had you woken up and he was masturbating to porn, what would you have thought? better but i mean still <laughs> not ideal the room, you know kyla you know what i'm just gonna pivot onto something totally different here do you feel like you know who you are without your boyfriend yeah i okay. find like see when we when we broke up you know everyone was trying to tell me this is when you need to figure out who you are and i i basically like i i feel like i know who i am so sure it's okay. not like my world revolves around him at i just all. asked because you guys got together pretty young yeah listen i whether you know to lauren's point whether you know who you are or not like and i not to sound condescending you are young and that's an awesome thing mm -hmm. and regardless of how much you already know there's you i i hope that you hope that you have a lot more to learn just regardless of any 21 year old there's so much life and there's so much things that as people we can all learn and so this this mistake doesn't make him a bad person and I can't even necessarily it makes him a cheater because like it's just it was weird and he got caught and mm -hmm. it's like a poor decision on his part. But like, yeah, it might be an opportunity for you to take a, a like maybe he's moved back in. Maybe this is a real opportunity to see if this is like because clearly he has. This is going to be a thing that you're wondering if he's thinking about other people. And maybe because you guys have been together for most of your adult life, that maybe you guys need to experience yeah. life outside of each other. You guys are so young that you could break up and date other people. But you like, have time. You, I think if yeah. you're meant to be together and if you date other people, the only thing that that will help you do is get resolved that he is the person for you. You know, if you go and kind of date other people and experience the world a little bit and you miss him and you're thinking about him, then that'll give you some resolution. Is it cheating, though, if you do that? <sighs> is it cheating? Well, you've got to be on the same It's emotionally, page. like, it definitely, I, it, do you, I'm sure you felt emotionally cheated and I can think it's she has a right to feel that way for yeah. sure, right? Um at the same time, as humans, we have all fantasized about people. Uh, maybe did we maybe we didn't take off the phone, but like, mm -hmm. I, I, it's I'm sure people listening have whether it, for him to do it next to you while you're sleeping, and um, does it make it okay if like he did it while you were at work and couldn't have got caught? But like, I bet that's happened. People in relationships masturbate to porn, and sometimes they communicate, and their spouses know, you know. Yeah. It's a weird thing, but yeah. um, I think, and that more importantly, to Lauren's point, you guys, maybe you need to experience life outside of each other, regardless if you know yourself or not. And clearly he is thinking about other uh, girls and that doesn't make him a bad person, but he shouldn't be doing it in a relationship. So maybe you guys yeah. should have life without each other and see if it's, if it's really a relationship you guys want to be in with each other. Definitely. It's definitely been one of my thoughts. So. <laughs> All right. You're beautiful, right. Kyla. Yeah, you're going to be... cute you are. Thank you. All right, good luck. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. It's so nice to meet you. You as guys. well. Thanks for calling. Okay, bye. She seemed Ooh. awfully excited. Given This is such an emotional burden you take on, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. you got to advise these people on their five-year relationship. the best part of the show. This is a lot. Hello? Hello. It's Tracy. Hi, Tracy. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm um, I'm good. I'm I'm Nick. This is Lauren. Hi, Lauren. We also nice have to Rochelle in the room. Hello. Hi. And what's your question, Tracy? Um, okay, so I'll try to make this as succinct as I can. Um, so my husband and I have been together for nine years, uh -huh. married for six years, and we have a three year old daughter. Did you say six years? 
Yes. Okay. Um, about two years ago, my husband started um, getting very unhappy and kind of depressed just with life in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so I talked to him about it, and he thought he was having like a midlife crisis, and he needed something in his life that was just his and that didn't revolve around just my daughter and I. Um, so I signed him up for some improv classes he was interested in, and he really liked that for a while, and then things kind of went back to how they were before. Okay. Um, so I thought maybe it was a problem between the two of us and we needed to like connect more. So I tried to set up date nights for us twice a month, sure. like once a month, we get a babysitter and go out and do something. And then once a month we'd put my daughter to bed and have a date night in and I would like plan something fun for us to do. Um, that those dates went fine, but uh, the next day things went back to how they were before. Um, he started, as time went on, getting, like, mean and said mean things to me and just didn't really seem to like me. Um, so I kind of took the approach of, I, like, made a conscious decision to stop caring about that and mm-hmm. just focus on my daughter and stop worrying about that I wasn't being good enough for him and just wanted to, like, enjoy life with my daughter. So we did that, and I discovered that I could do Everything I needed to do with her on my own, I didn't necessarily need my husband. Um, And then we had a family vacation with my family, and he was horrible to me that whole week, like yelling at me and just being really mean, and my family was really concerned, but I didn't want them to talk to him about it because I thought it was something we needed to work on together. Um, So after that, I told him that we needed to go to counseling, and I was going to go, and if he didn't want to go, that was fine, but I was going because I didn't know what else to do. Um, so he came with me and shortly after that, he started, um, taking medication for anxiety. Um, this was back in like September, we started doing this. And ever since then, we've been going to counseling and he's been really improving a lot and like taking to heart everything that I've been saying that I've had issues with and it was going really well. Um, but for some reason I'm struggling now to get the feelings back that I had for him before any of this ever happened. Sure. Um, I know that he's really trying to be better and he is being better, but I, for whatever reason, I can't emotionally get myself back there. Um, so I don't know. I'm wondering what can I do to like fully forgive him and fall back in love with my husband? Because right now I feel like we're not there at all. And I don't want to be stuck in a marriage where I don't love my husband forever. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, listen, I think, uh, thanks for your question. It's a very vulnerable and honest question. Um, and you're in a tough spot. I think there's a couple things to, to consider here. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? In terms of you basically through your story kind of uh, told us kind of an evolution of your relationship, right? And the one mm-hmm. theme that I noticed um, when you're telling the story, it's literally you're doing all the work. You, you, you know, he was needed some more excitement. So you signed him up for improv and like, you know, you suggested counseling and, you know, you were like doing 90% of this relationship and he, like he was showing up and that takes its toll in terms of like the desire to make it work. And that process, you again, realize that you could do these on his own and on, on, on your own. And so that fear of like needing the partner or needing that person to help me, you became a kind of a independent, powerful person. Right. And so that kind of makes sense of why maybe now you're feeling these feelings of like, do I really need you? And there's some resentment in there. And like, you even mentioned like the ability to forgive at the same time you are married and like, it just kind of depends on, on, um, what your vows mean to you. And I'm not saying like people do get divorced. And sometimes I know you say, you know, death do your part, but sometimes the right thing to do, unfortunately, is to separate, right? And I think you're just in a position to decide what's your timeline? What's your patience level? I mean, I've never been married, um, but every time I've talked to a married couple who's had, you know, 20, 30, 40 plus years of marriage, they talk about good years and bad years, not like months and days. So this might be something you have to get through. I think it's very honest. I think you need to communicate with him where you're at um, too, without making him feel threatened. But there's not, I think you just have to continue to keep doing what you're doing and eventually 
figure out if you can get it back, right? But like, I don't think there's anything wrong, especially you have a family together to try to make it work. Um, this might be a process that could take six, 12 months, mm -hmm. 18 months to get back. And I don't think it's gonna change overnight. And my guess is subconsciously, my, my I don't know, is it subconsciously, do you feel like how how permanent is this? His effort that he's showing, like, do you even know if this is like, if it's genuine or if he means it, or is he just like trying to make it work kind of thing? So you're probably processing all this um, and figuring it out, you know? I think you got to see the effort. That's the thing. You have to feel like you see continued sustained effort from that other person because any relationship, whether it's marriage, friendship, or work relationship is a two-way street. And I understand why your feelings would wane if you're not seeing the effort from him, especially if you've been very communicative and clear that you need to see effort from him. If you're telling him, I need you to do these things, I need to see these things from you, and that's not happening time and time again, I understand your feelings. And you know what? At the end of the day, you have to feel like you gave it your all before you walk away. So I, that's a question I would ask myself. Do I feel like I have tried everything I absolutely can? When you say like you have to forgive him, do you feel resentment? You like, do you feel resentment towards him? Um, I guess I thought, like we talked about this together and, say, and I thought that I had forgiven him. And then as we've gone through, you know, my coming with, for lack of a better word, like different complaints, every time we meet with our therapist and he's actually making an effort to fix these things. And I'm not having these feelings come back. I'm thinking that, I mean, I don't know why they're not coming back. So I'm thinking maybe it is because I'm still resentful and I don't know how to get over that. Cause I don't feel like I am, but when I think about it, I still feel really bad about the situations that happened. So yeah. I guess I am. I just don't know how to what's your I guess my question is what's your trust level that this new person is is gonna you know what I'm saying do you believe that because I, if I were you I would have uncertainty about like how he's gonna be and that would make me wonder if it's really worth my time and I wonder if you feel that you know like do you trust yeah. that this new version of him is really the new version of him or is it just kind of like this kind of temporary thing you know yeah, and I don't know, I definitely feel that way, and I don't know how to know that for sure. Yeah. So I, it's been... I mean, listen, I don't, have a, I don't have a hard, like, do this or do that. I will, all I want to say is, it sounds like you're doing the right things. You're doing as much as you can, and I commend you for that. You're doing therapy. You just kind of have to keep checking yourself and checking in with yourself. I think there's nothing wrong with giving it more time uh, and wanting to make this work. And then you have to decide what your breaking point is. Um, and you have to figure out whether this is going to be something that you could regret if you left a relationship. But if he's willing to do the work, I try to, and you, and you love him, maybe you might not be in love with him, but you love him as a person and you love the family. There's nothing wrong with seeing if you can get that feeling back. And it might take some time, you know, but at some point, if, if it's gone, then it's, I guess, gone, you know? But you're doing the right yeah. things. You're doing everything you can at this point. I think that's great. All our love to you, girl. You're gorgeous. It sounds like you're prioritizing yourself and your daughter. So good for you. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Well, take care. I hope that was somewhat helpful. Just keep, keep your head up high and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Bye, Tracy. Lauren, thanks for coming. Thank you for having so me. So much fun. Uh, good luck with your relationship. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Not that I want you to break up, but if you do, can we have the exclusive? No. Oh my god! No, I, I've wow. seen great the tables things. Have really if I yeah. ever, yeah. if I if I ever, you know, get in a relationship, maybe we can double. Ooh. Um, uh, and then you know, we'll just we'll just go from there. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks this for so much being fun. a, a so friend. Funny. Thanks You're for amazing. being a friend of Bachelor Nation. Oh. Uh, give me all the dirt uh, that you get, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, fans thanks for uh, listening uh if you uh like us always you know we appreciate the five stars if you could and uh we will see you next week okay.